Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Art, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about why it's so important to measure uh, when you're benchmarking, especially in non-intuitive cases. And we're going to be using this idea of trying to make a faster, uh, faster modulo operator as an example. Right, so here we're going to be generating some input pairs, right, if you want to know how to do this for Google Benchmark. Uh, I'll go ahead and link Google Benchmark in the description below. They've got a good example in the readme of how to do this. But the takeaway here is that we're going to be changing input sizes here of a vector, right, between 16 and 1024, right, so 2 to the 4 to 2 to the 10. And then for each of those, we're going to have another element here, right, so either 32, 128, or 224, right, and those that will be our argument pair, a size and then actually a ceiling, right. And that ceiling corresponds to um, what we're do going to be doing the modulo of. So it'll be either modulo 32, 128, or 224. And these are very specifically chosen for our data. So our data, data is going to be between 0 and 255, right? So 32 corresponds to about 12.5% of the numbers being below the modulo uh, ceiling. Then 128 corresponds to about half the numbers being below. And then at 224, 87.5% um, are below, right? Or 12.5 are above, right? So um, three kind of uh, points to look at. It's always good when you're benchmarking things to understand how it works at not only different sizes, but potentially different, uh, you know, ceilings as well in terms of like a mod, if for something like this, it's a modulo, right? You want to test the sensitivity of your design sometimes. So over here, we'll have our base modulo, right? So this is exactly how you expect to, uh, if, if somebody said, go out and, you know, I've got a bunch of numbers, I want to calculate the modulo of them. How would you write that code? Well, odds are you'd write it exactly like this, right? So you would iterate over the entire, uh, you know, vector, and you would store into the output, the input mod, whatever the ceiling is, right? So mod 32, mod 128, or mod 224, right? But what if we said, make this faster, right? It, it's kind of a hard thing to think about, and it's mainly because it already is so simple, right? It's really just this one line of code here. How do we make this faster? Well, we have to kind of deconstruct it a little bit. We have to say, well, I know that modulo and division is going to be, you know, it's a, it's, it, it's a pretty expensive operation, right? It's much more expensive than something like addition. And, you know, in the cases like 224, you know, most of the time, my number is going to actually be below the modulo, right? So if I do say, you know, 32 mod 224, Right, the answer is just 32, right? The modulo didn't actually change anything there. So what if sometimes I could just skip it, right? And that's what we'll do for this fast mod case. Right, so for this fast mod case, we're going to have this comparison, right? So we're going to do input of i is greater than or equal to seal, right? So if it's, you know, uh, say 200 and, you know, 80 or something, mod 224, right? We still need to do a modulo, right? But for all those cases where we're going to be below the modulo, We'll just skip it, right? So we'll just store back input of i. So if it's two, uh, 200 mod 224, we'll just store 200 and we won't compute a modulo, right? And this is where the non-intuitive part comes in, right? So is it faster to have the very simple code where we're just doing modulo? Or is it faster to have a branch here, right? And so branches have some negative side effects. So a branch can be expensive. So if we, um, you know, if most of our data is going to be, uh, if you know if it's random and scattered around, well, maybe the branch predictor can't keep up with it, right? And maybe uh, we're constantly mispredicting branches, right? And while we're gaining sometimes in terms of you know skipping the modulo operator, other times maybe the branch is so expensive that you know we're actually losing time there, right? But this is something that we can't reason about, right? It's it's something that we shouldn't reason about. This is something that requires measurement, right? So let's let's actually measure and see. So here we'll go ahead and compile this. Right. And we'll have to link against libbenchmark and libpthread, and this is just for Google Benchmark. So there it's compiled, and let's collect some numbers. All right, so this is our base mod, 16 elements, mod 32. We're using a uniform uh, distribution between 0 and 255 for our data, so it should be fairly spread out, and it's going over so many iterations, we can trust it uh, fairly well. Right, And we see that all the numbers for the different vector sizes um, or for the same vector size in the base mod, they should be around the same, right? Because, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're doing mod 32, 120, or 224, if you're doing a modulo on every single uh, element in that vector, right? It should be about the same. And that's what we see here. 
Now the interesting case is what happens with fast mod, right? And we have some surprising results, right? So what we'd expect is the worst case is when we have mod 32, because most of the time we're still doing a modulo and now we have an added branch in there. But it turns out that actually doesn't matter that much. So here we've got fast mod. We can actually zoom in a little bit. So for fast mod, uh, for 16 elements, mod 32, so most of the time our you know, random number is going to be above 32, we're still doing better right, than the baseline that's doing mod on every single number despite having a branch. And you know we can see this down to uh, you know, 1024 mod 32, we're at 21, 21 nanoseconds. And then our base mod right, at 32 is at 2220. So we're still doing better by about 100 nanoseconds, right? Which is kind of surprising, right? But this isn't even the reason why we have this uh, uh, conditional in here. What about the best case, right? So what about at 224, right? So at 224, most of the time, we're skipping the modulo, right? And it's fairly consistent that we're skipping because most of the numbers fall below 224. So our baseline is 34 nanoseconds. And then our fast mod, it's only 13 nanoseconds, right? So this is quite a lot faster. And then we can see that this, you know, this trend continues all the way to fast mod, right, for 1024 elements. So now, you know, we've got a whole bunch of elements, and most of the time we're skipping mod. It only takes about a thousand nanoseconds for our fast mod version. For our slow mod, it's about 2100, right? So, you know, it turns out, right, what we may have thought, well, you know, even even if our data range uh, has a pretty variable range, or maybe our ceiling has a very uh, pretty variable range. We may have thought, well, maybe the branch is just too expensive in some cases, so it's better just to leave it as a normal modulo. But through actual measurement, we showed that that's just not true, right? We showed that in this particular case, you know, even having the branch in there, we were still getting better performance, even if it is marginally better in this case, right? With mod 32 and 16 elements, right? It's still better though, right? So this is a pretty interesting, and we'd get a great win here. Uh, but another interesting thing we can look at is what if we really know our data, right? So what if we know that this case is very likely? Well, can we make our code even better for this case? And it turns out we can, right? So we can give some hints to the compiler and tell the compiler, well, I know most of the time you're going to skip this modulo, right? And we can tell that, right? Right in our code, right? So we'll go ahead and go into, uh, let's go ahead and zoom out. And before we actually do that, let's actually do, uh, let's actually record this, right? So we'll record our fast mod, right? Of 1024, right? So this is our, let's actually record the best case, right? This is the case we want to optimize even further, right? So we know that most of the time we're going to skip the mod. So we'll go ahead and record this. We'll run it for two seconds, right? And then we can generate a report. And we're really just doing this, right? So here, about a thousand nanoseconds for that. So pretty quick, right? Much faster than our base mod. And then in our report, we can just get kind of a snapshot. We don't need to understand this code too well, but just so we have a comparison for later on, right? So we can see, you know, this is what's happening. We've got our div, our, our div here. So this is our actual mod, right? And we see that, you know, it's taking up quite a lot of the time. But the branch is also taking up quite a lot of the time, right? So it's split pretty evenly here, right? So division is just an expensive operation. So whenever we have to do it, it takes a while. But a lot of our time is actually spent just branching, right? Because most of the time we're branching here. Okay. So let's see how this changes. If we go ahead and uh, open our code again, and we give our compiler a hint. So right here, we know that in the case where we're doing mod 224, Right, we know most of the time we're going to just be using input. So why don't we say most of the time this input being greater than the ceiling is unlikely. And we can tell the compiler that, right? In this case with GCC, we can do this built-in expect. Right? And what we can say here is that this is likely to resolve to zero, right? So most of the time input of i is greater than or equal to ceiling, right? This will be a zero, right? Or false, right? So most of the time we're just going to be doing this. So how does this change our performance and how does this change what our code looks like? All right, so we'll go ahead and do uh, compile it again, right? And we'll go ahead and run this again, right? So fast mod 
in our best case, right? So let's see if we can beat a thousand nanoseconds. And we did, we, we beat it by quite a bit actually, right? So almost two X, right? So we got it down to about 563 nanoseconds, but we also see something uh, different here, right? So if we actually go into our code, our code's actually changed a bit, right? So that's how, that's how we were able to get better performance. We got better performance because, uh, you know, when we're actually, uh, when the code was generated, it was generated in such a way to optimize the fact that most of the time uh, we were going to, uh, that branch was going to resolve to false, right? So, or that condition was going to resolve to false. Most of our data is actually below the ceiling, right? But this is a dangerous thing to do though, right? It's, it's, it's something that I should stress. You should really only give these compiler hints if you're absolutely sure of your data, right? So if you're, if you're absolutely sure that most of the time the mod's not going to happen, you can give these compiler hints like built in expect, um, zero, right? Or if it's going to be taken, right? Like it, if, if is going to be taken, you can maybe say, you know, built in expect one, but it's a dangerous thing to do sometime. Um, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode, right? So what are the key takeaways here? Uh, biggest one is just measure, right? So if you have a non-intuitive scenario, like, is it more expensive to do a branch than it is to do a modulo? The only way to resolve this is by actually measuring it, right? And trying to measure it across a range of circumstances, right? Range of circumstances that really tests uh, the different cases of branches, right? Uh, and the different, you know, penalties that you might face for less predictable branches, more predictable branches. Uh, and the second one is, you know, if we really understand our data, doing things like telling the compiler ahead of time what to expect can yield even greater improvements, right? So we saw another about, you know, a little less than 2x improvement by just adding this built-in expect in our best case. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode. As always, feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So this is in C++ Crash Course under optimizations and under fast mod, right? So feel free to download this, take a look at it. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions. I'll also link this below. So this example really comes from uh, CppCon 2015. Uh, this great presentation, it goes over a number of optimization steps and it goes even more in detail about this, uh, you know, this fast mod, including why things like loop unrolling for, you know, just a regular mod uh, doesn't really work. So I'll link that below as well. But as always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.